Debbie, could you unmute yourself? All right, you can hear me. I'm just sorting out my camera. Fantastic. If I ever come off camera, please know it's because I need to move closer to a laptop charger. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, Devadin? I'm all right, thank you. You're Good. Still? I am well. Happy to hear about the power of ETFs, honestly, because during this pandemic, during this just potential recession, Lord knows that I definitely want to get my investment strategy right, and that can't come without the right knowledge. So. I'm very grateful that you're going to be taking us through ETF Wonderful. today. Let me know when you are ready. As I did say to the attendees, we are starting at 12.05, so you do have two more minutes. Should I use this time to introduce myself? Uh, yes. Cool. So everyone, um, just to give you a little background about me, my name is Bola Sol. I am a mathematics and finance graduate, so I'm not a stranger to finance myself. Um, and in 2015, so five years ago, I set up my first company, which was called Refined Currency. And I now have a second company called Rich Girl Chronicles. And that is about helping women become more financially confident. Because um, I feel like more women need to be in the conversation. Ladies, if you're in here, let me know how you feel about money and how often we feel like we're in the conversation. I've also heard that women actually make better investment decisions long term i am not just saying this i am happy to pull up some stats so um i'm super happy to be here with debadon hosting and i've seen the slides it's, it's going to be a great presentation because um ever since debadon taught me more about investing my portfolio has gotten so much better and i feel like i make wiser investment decisions so you all are in for a treat today Hi, Bola. I hope you're going to drop a link to join Rich Girl Chronicles. I am. I'll be honest, Rich Girl Chronicles is revamping. So we are restarting in September. I find that in the summer, a lot of people tend to lose their heads. They want to go out. They want to buy clothes because it's hot. They want to eat. They don't want to cook out. So I tend to not um, have a focus of Rich Girl Chronicles in summer. However, look out for us in the first and second week of September because we are launching a whole new program. It is going to be fantastic because I want everybody to go into this impending recession with financial confidence. Regardless of your circumstances, I do want you to feel financially stable. Debden, I'm done talking. Are we ready? Yes, we are ready. Woohoo! Right. Let me sort this out. Yes, works. Lovely. How are you all doing today? Um, I see that there's a poll. Everyone, I hope you've all looked at the poll and are I haven't voting the, away. Yeah, I haven't put the poll up yet simply okay. because one of the questions is actually in your presentation. So I thought I could use the poll. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> no, don't um, worry. All right. So, um, I'm just going to share my screen. Um, and we can get started. There we go. Does that look all right? So, this is the agenda. We might tweak it a little bit. Um, Bola's done the introductions already. Um, but yeah, there you go. It's me, that's Bola. Um, this is a little bit about ourselves. You would have seen it on the Eventbrite already. Um, Bola runs Rich Girl Chronicles. We're both mathematicians um, and she focuses on helping women with finance. Um, I'm a trader with experience in multi-asset over the past 10 years. Um, I've built a community called Stock Pickers Academy um, on Instagram, we're on Telegram, we've got a WhatsApp chat and it's basically where we share um, a lot of information on investing in stocks and ETFs and funds and REITs. Um, today we're going to focus on ETFs 
And here is my favorite line. Everything I'm gonna try and teach today and share with you, I'm gonna keep it as simple as I can because the stop pickers way is breaking down concept, uh, complicated concepts into bite-sized chunks. And this was overheard a couple, uh, one or two years ago in the stock pickers WhatsApp chat. If a stock is a fruit, an ETF is a smoothie, right? And a bit more about ETFs. And what that saying means is a fund is a collection of stocks, an exchange traded fund is a packaged collection of stocks with different proportions of different stocks. And we're going to go into some examples later on. Um, now, Finimize was one of our first partners, and on the back of that is why we're able to have this event today. Um, what is an ETF? An ETF is an investment fund traded on a stock exchange, just like stocks. So the price of ETFs can actually go up and down. An ETF holds assets such as stocks, commodities, or bonds, and generally operates with an arbitrage mechanism designed to keep it close, trading close to its net asset value, although sometimes you can get some deviations. Now, why would we use ETFs? Well, it's number one, it saves you the hassle. Every time you buy a stock, you get charged a transaction cost. Now, imagine you wanted to invest in a theme like robotics or electric vehicles. Instead of having to go and buy Tesla, Nikola, Volkswagen, Volvo, and have multiple stocks in your portfolio, someone else has done the work, done the research, and come up with a smoothie the electric vehicle smoothie. Now, that just means instead of going to buy your oranges, your apples, your pineapples, your pears, and then your Nutribullet, you can just go straight to Tesco, i.e. the exchange, and buy your smoothie. So it saves a lot of hassle. However, this also makes ETFs less volatile than stocks. So they're actually safer investments, especially when you're investing in packaged stocks. So an ETF that has a combination of different stocks inside. Now, we're in very testing times due to Corona, due to COVID-19. A lot of stocks, a lot of investments have actually lost their value. And there's a lot of volatility in the markets. So one thing I'm going to add, one thing I decided to add to this presentation was how do you trade or invest in ETFs during times of uncertainty? Now with all safe investments or lower risk investments, it is always good value if you can buy them when they're on sale. Now, how do I define sale? If a stock is significantly below however high it's been throughout the year that makes the stock on sale so if a etf has a price of five and then that was the yearly high and then you suddenly saw that etf 50 percent cheaper at 2.5 in a way that's on sale what you don't want to do is you don't want to buy low risk investments really high you don't want to buy cheap um low risk investments when the price is really high because they're not volatile enough for you to significantly make more and just like stocks what we preach at stock pickers academy is buy the dips now you can allocate a bit more capital to etfs because they are less volatile and your target percentage return would be a little bit less than investing in stocks. Now, keeping a close eye on ETF statistics during times of market stress can help investors understand how ETFs operate and trade. 
Here are some statistics. At the end of June 2020, the European ETF industry had 1,796 ETFs with 7,676 listings, assets of 928 billion, that's almost a trillion dollars, from 59 providers and listed on 27 exchanges. At the end of June, the industry had 2,264 ETFs and ETPs with 8,638 listings and assets of that 100, sorry, 1 billion, 1 trillion from 69 providers on 28 exchanges. So ETPs are the, um, the next level up from ETFs, um, but they operate in a fairly similar way. New cash. New cash business for ETF providers globally over the past decade has now exceeded 3.7 trillion. And the industry's worldwide assets ended 2019 at a record 6.3 trillion and that's from deborah fur co-founder of etfgi you can check out their website now let's get a bit um more focused on themes and trends technology energy and resources demographics Technology has been at the forefront of every economic revolution, and this is more evident now than ever. I'm sure some of you would know this already. Every industry is at risk of being disrupted by new technologies. Energy and resources, climate constraints, and techno technological improvements are radically changing the way we think about energy. The need for clean solutions and the battery revolution are here to stay. And we're going to see a little bit about that later to see what the battery ETFs have done. The population in the developed world, from a demographical point of view, is aging. While a new young middle class is growing in emerging economies, these changing dynamics are setting in motion profound changes in consumer needs and behavior. Policy and government, sorry about the font, but changes in the government policies around inequality and ESG, like we're talking about emissions, um, renewable energy, recycling, this is forcing change. Here's some examples of ETFs to invest in things. Now, these are the tickers. INRG, this is clean energy. These are the smoothies. You've got the clean energy smoothie. You've even got a racial inequality smoothie. You've got electric vehicles and driverless technology. Now this one, e-car, has Tesla in it. And when I talk about ETFs being low risk, the price of Tesla since March has trebled, more than trebled. That's a 200% return. Can I ask However, you a question? Yeah. This is just subjective. Do you think that the Tesla share price is too high? I think that, well, Elon Musk thought the Tesla share price was too high when it was at 800. Whether he was just joking, we, we, we don't know. It sounded like it. He was being quite sarcastic. However, I think with growing industries, emerging industries, highs can get higher. Now, we don't buy highs and stock pickers. What we do is, once we know what the new highs are, we wait for a pullback. So, with Tesla being at 1,500, 
if it was to pull back to 1,000, that starts to become a bit more reasonable as an entry point. Because this same Tesla a year and a half ago had one of the dropped nearly 70% and people were panicking. So this behavior can happen anytime and there could be any catalyst. We saw Boohoo, just out of the blue, new investigation, the price drops 50%. So you have to respect the markets, especially in ETF world. Buying highs in ETF world is more dangerous than buying highs in stock worlds because in volatility, volatility can enable stock prices to recover if you average or buy a bit more as the price drops. Whereas with ETFs, because they're slower, if you bought eCar when it was about 5.34 a year and a half ago, it's only just getting back to just below break even. Whereas if you waited for a dip, you could have picked up the same e-car in March at three, at 3.5, which is one of the things I did. So now the position is about 25% to 30% in profit. I would say over a year's period, if you can get 15 to 20% on an ETF, you've done really, really well. But you're not gonna get that buying highs. You see, as an investor, you want to lose the smallest amount possible when you're wrong. Now, we've got other examples like ESPO. This is gaming. If there's one thing we noticed during lockdown is watching electronic sports, watching people play video games became a thing. Well, it was already a trend, but the trend accelerated. So again, you need to find emerging trends. Mm. And that should help your selection process to know which industry you want to go for. Cybersecurity, mm. robotics. Mm. During lockdown, with a lot of people working at home more, a lot of companies actually invested in a lot of internet security companies. Absolutely. More, more subscriptions. I've noticed that a lot of people changed, even changed their security code on WhatsApp. And that people are now asking about VPNs. So uh, I think that's virtual private networks. That's what it stands for. So yeah, definitely there's been a, there's been a big rise in security and I see the need for it because hackers, a lot of people have been hacking, even like a lot of people spoke about hacking um, on Zoom calls and things like that. Exactly. And um, it's a good point because um, I had a client recently, he told me that their work, their work has actually gone to VPN 24-7, whereas before it was only VPN, you needed approval and you needed um, VPN only for specific time periods at request. So, like we saw in the earlier slides, there's so many ETFs. You still need to, I call it the interview process. You, these stocks are pitching to you and you're deciding which ETF which sector is going to get the job offer. Some get through the telephone interview and some get all the way through to the final round. And then you might see this as a final round and then you select, whoa, clean energy or gaming, cybersecurity or electric vehicles. Yeah. Can I just ask you a question that's related to this current slide? P.S. Yeah. For anyone who has answered questions before, apologies for the drilling outside. For anyone who has answered, um, who has asked questions before, if it, if I think it's coming up in the next few slides, then I'll let you know, or we can ask at the end. But Renz, Renz asked, will the possible Trump ban of Tencent slash TikTok impact ESPO ETF? Um, it hasn't really, because I took a look at it recently and it was actually at its year high. In fact, cybersecurity, there's another one called BATT, and this is, no, and CHRG, and these represent battery charging ETFs. Um, so ESPO has actually hit its one year high um, within the past week. Um, and how do I know that? Well, we're gonna see in some of the future slides how I know that. Um, I've got a watch list. And my watch list is a Stock Pickers Academy's watch list, and it's got ETFs on it. And I've got lots of different statistics on the watch list that help me to know bits of information without having to do too much work. Here are some examples of some ETF platforms and providers. I mean, 
The rise of the of ETFs in transforming the fund industry with the two biggest providers, BlackRock and Vanguard, leading an aggressive price war on fees that is forcing rival managers to overhaul their business models just to survive. Argues Lansdowne, Vanguard, AJ Bell, DeGiro, IG Index are some of the platforms where you can buy ETFs. You see, what these platforms are, they're really online brokers. You can't buy an ETF straight from the exchange unless you have a license. So what these guys do is they pay for the license and then they act as middlemen and then they charge fees. The main ETF providers in the UK are BlackRock iShares, State Street, DBX Trackers, Vanguard, Lightsaw, and ETF Securities. Here's a watch list. Sorry if the font is not so sh um, readable, but... I can see it fine. Um, let's, let's take a look at ESPO here. So this is the Stock Pickers Academy's watch list. And it has live prices on it. So anyone who takes sessions with me gets this. We go through this and I'll show you how you can use my specialized watch list to find opportunities. Um, so if you look at ESPO, this is the ETF for gaming. That's the current price of 60. This is the 30 day, one, uh, 30 day trend chart. So you can see it's just been going up. It's denominated in dollars. The most recent change was 0.47 cent dollars. Um, the daily highs you can see is quite tight. It's not very volatile intraday. Now, if you look at this cell here, without giving too much away, you can see it's close to zero, which basically says it is 0.2% away from the yearly high. So I've put in a lot of columns in here. Um, what I haven't put in yet, actually what I have put in is a target entry price. You can see the current price is 60. Like I said, we don't buy highs and stock pickers. So what I'm saying here is, I am not going to buy this ETF. However, if the price was to get to 40, which is a bit like a 30% sale, then I would buy. Now, I haven't quite put a target exit in because I do feel like there's a lot of momentum. But if the price was to fall to 40, I would get an automatic trade alert. So here's a little tip. We don't provide investment advice. I don't give investment advice, disclaimers. I just let you know, if I was to buy this particular ETF, 40 will be the price range that I'd be looking to buy. And if that happened, I would probably buy a little bit of it because it's a safer entry point for me and I'm a very careful investor. So we've got the Stock Pickers Academy watch list and there's so much more on this sheet and anyone that takes sessions with me gets to see how you can find opportunities. It has over 400 securities on the watch list and some other columns that help with the decision making. Now, if you don't happen to take sessions with myself, you can still take from this exercise that it's very important to create a watch list. And from that watch list, you can make comparisons with different ETFs. This is the interview process, right? And some candidates will make it to the final round and some will fail at the telephone interview stage. That's the analogy I like to use. Everyone can't get the job, but you might have three seats three job offers. So you always need to pick the best one from a value perspective. Why? Because you can buy a fantastic ETF and lose money because you bought the wrong price. 
and you can buy a really bad ETF and make money because it goes up in price because it was cheaper than it should have been. Can I ask Hold some on. questions? Um, Careway Link said, but all ETFs are not available to invest in the UK. I'm assuming that he'd like to know maybe a potential way around this. Okay. It's a good point and it's a fantastic question. There's an ETF called BETZ and it's sports betting. And I actually wanted to, um, it's on this sheet, but I have, it's not on the screenshot. I wanted to invest in this and unfortunately, if it's not in a provider that's in the country you're located in, hard to say, but it's tough luck. You just have to wait around and hope one day they're able to bring the product to the UK. So there are some ETFs that you can only invest in if you live in America. Thank you. But it's a waiting game. I'm yeah. hoping that eventually the ETF market is still evolving, you see. It really is. ETFs is the future. Mutual funds used to be the traditional way of investing. So we have to just wait around and as the industry evolves, there'll be more access. I am finding that mutual funds are becoming more and more archaic. Um, yes. I don't want to get into it too tough today. I know we're in the right place to cook, but the focus is on ETFs. But I do find, you know, whereas I, I would, you know, used to take pride in like FTSE 100 and things like that. A lot of, although it's, it's all very similar, but they, they aren't as fast growing in terms of economic development as ETFs are, in my opinion. That's one thing. That's I'm correct. Um, do you want to wait for questions at the end? Because a few people have said um, particular things in regards to there's the... Gonna be, there's going to be questions at the end. Okay, we'll wait. Um, I'm going to talk about REITs very sh quickly. Now, a REIT is a real estate investment trust, but you can also use them to invest in themes. Um, what do I mean by that? This is a warehouse REIT. Now, if you wanted to invest in the online shop, boom like shopify a lot of these online companies store their assets in warehouse warehouses and the warehouses have logistic companies so you make an order online on amazon or ebay and the order goes straight to the warehouse so these warehouses make their money through rent and then they reward investors with dividends they're not quite ETFs, but they're very, very similar in the sense that you can buy and sell them on the stock exchange. Now, this one, I did buy it at 70 and recently I sold it. May I ask I made you hold 35%. that 35%. Sorry? Sorry. How long did you hold that position to go from 70 to 110? From March. So in March, it actually fell as low as 50. Wow. Now... This doesn't usually happen in ETFs and REITs. Corona and the environment right now has provided some volatility in asset classes that, and, and assets like ETFs that usually were considered safe. Now, these opportunities come around once every 10 years. So if you were able to buy a dip in a stable, low risk asset, you make money on both the price, but also on the dividends. And it's quite important to sometimes take profit and then sit back from the sidelines for a couple of months and see what happens with price. Because right now, especially at the moment, the market's a bit volatile. Um, we're gonna move on. Here are five key points to consider when investing in ETFs when markets are volatile. ETF flows, why it matters. People follow aggregate ETF outflows and inflows, also known as net flows, for insights into market sentiment and investor behavior. You want to know, are there a lot of people who are putting their money into ETFs or are people actually taking their money out of ETFs? So 
the, the net flows actually represent fluctuations in demand. And when a demand for an ETF exceeds supply, new shares are created. That's called inflow. And when demand contracts, people get their shares back. That's called outflow. Net flows demonstrate how an ETF investor allocates, adjusts positions, and manages risk. Number two, what is the impact of the flows on prices? Input flows are derived from the collective weight of flows into ETF holdings of US stocks and demonstrate that most ETF shares trade on exchange between buyers and sellers. The majority of on-exchange trading doesn't affect the market price of constituent stocks in which ETFs invest in. This is because ETF constituent stocks are only affected by ETF trading when ETF shares are created and redeemed. That's an important point to note. ETF trade and volume. More volatility typically means more ETF trading and investing because investors actually use ETFs to rebalance. This is institutional investors now and hedge to protect themselves in times of uncertainty. So what you can do as an investor is you can compare the dollar volume of ETF shares that trade on exchange with the dollar volume of the individual stocks to gauge the magnitude of ETF volume. Some of this is available online. ETF trade and volume only measures the transactions between buyers and sellers on exchange. And that's very different from inflows and outflows. Bid ask spreads. Now, in layman's terms, a bid ask spread is the difference between the price you can buy at any one time and the price you can sell. So you'll notice whenever you go and buy a stock, there's a buy and a sell price, and there's a difference between the two. That's your bid ask spread. Now, sometimes that can get wider and sometimes that can get narrower, the difference. Now, what drives that and why does it matter? ETF investors tend to have a laser focus on management fees. So it's important to remember the total cost of ETF ownership also includes transaction costs. And these are captured by that difference between the buy and the sell price. For more active investors, transaction costs can actually add up, especially during volatile periods. Voila. Absolutely. Sorry, I just wanted to interject to say that so, so often people get really caught up in terms like, oh, is it really free to trade on this platform and things like that? And I say, yes, but you have to look at the costs. And with investing, some of the costs seem quite hidden because you hear free trade and then you don't think about all the admin fees that go into the people who are managing particular funds, as well as the fact that the platform you're using also needs to be able to um, benef benefit financially. Okay. Thank you, Bola. What do the numbers mean? ETF prices, like stock prices, are established by bid and ask quotations. Right? Just what we said. The bid is the highest current price at which investors are willing to buy. The ask is the lowest current price at which investors are willing to sell. And one of the things I cover in my sessions is something I call market methodology. This is what happens behind the screens of Hargreaves Lansdowne. And that's going to determine how, what you see at the front. Each price actually has a volume behind the screen that you don't get to see at exchange level. And you can actually see the different volumes for all the different price moves all the way back. What they show you at the front is the most desperate price. So someone who wants to buy, if I, someone who wants to buy on the exchange side, a market maker, a liquidity provider, the person who has the lowest price that they're willing to sell 
they come to the front. And that's what you see at the front of the Hargus Lansdowne queue. And the person who wants to buy at the highest possible price, they're a bit desperate. So that becomes the best buy price for someone like you and me who actually wants to buy. So what you see when you look at a buy and a sell or a bid and an ask is the worst possible price on the other side, but it's a best possible price for us. Don't worry if this flew over your head a little bit. Just book some sessions with me. But the key thing to realize is pay attention to the difference between the buy price and the sell price and see how that changes during volatile periods. Bond ETF volumes versus individual bond volumes. Again, similar to stock ETF volumes versus individual stock volumes. Now bonds is another asset class, just like stocks and just like commodities and just like foreign exchange currencies. Individual bonds actually trade differently than ETFs and stocks, which are bought and sold on exchanges with very transparent bid and ask or buy and sell quotes. In contrast, the bond market is relatively opaque and bid and ask quotations are not readily available at all. In stressed markets, and that means when markets are volatile, a bit like what we're experiencing now with this pandemic, trading individual corporate bonds can be time consuming and expensive. A corporate bond is basically a company bond. So if you buy a company's bond, you are lending the company money, but instead of getting a percentage of the business, you're, get, you're just getting interest rates. You're just getting paid interest. And typically, if you invest in companies' bonds instead of stocks or ETFs, you should expect to get a fixed guaranteed return of maybe two, two, two to three percent. And I'm being nice. But this has led investors to increasingly rely on bond ETFs rather than individual bonds for more transparent on exchange pricing and trading. What do the numbers mean? Well, when markets turn volatile, it's important to compare trading volumes of bond ETFs with individual bonds. These two statistics tend to diverge during times of volatility. If you don't take anything else away from this slide, take this away. Bond ETF volumes rise while individual bond volumes fall. In times of uncertainty, bond ETF values, volumes rise and people don't trade individual bonds as much. So it's good to keep an eye on this because this could be a reason to buy a bond ETF because more volumes and more demand should push up price. Bond ETFs could be a good thing to invest in during times of uncertainty because you could see a trend of investors moving from buying individual corporate bonds to buying bond ETFs. In summary, so those are the five things. I'm going to flip back so you see them again. ETF flows, the impact of ETF flows on prices, ETF trading volume, bid ask spreads, and ETF volumes versus individual bond volumes. Question. This is a bit you've all been waiting for. Everybody has been waiting with bated breath. Okay, let me get started with Matt because he was an early bird. Um, Matt said, I've been looking at investing in businesses and try to invest at share price that has a good margin of safety. To do this, I work out the intrinsic value and apply a percentage off. This intrinsic value is calculated on the business's fundamentals, which is easy because the data is available. How do I know when an ETF is at a fair value if I can't assess the intrinsic value because there are so many stocks in the ETF, each with different performance par parameters? Well, it's a good question. It's a tough question. Like I always say, life isn't fair, price isn't fair. Even if on an individual stock basis, you were able to, I, the thing I like the most about your question is you say you find the intrinsic value and then you take 
a discount off that. A lot of people find the intrinsic value. And if that value is below the current market price, they say, oh, this stock is cheap and they buy it. Very quickly, you learn that if you just buy stocks based on what the textbook says, you can lose money in the short run. Institutional investors and pension funds need to have a slightly different mandate to you and me. If you've just got 3K, 5K, 10K, 20K, 50K to invest, the way you invest has to be very, very different to Warren Buffett. So if you just read Warren Buffett books and you read the, a lot of the literature out there, those rules apply to people who've got millions and billions or people who actually want to work it in those institutions for their career where you are managing millions and billions and it works when you're managing millions and billions and you have a mandate to wait 30 40 years but you don't have that when you've got um your own personal investing because what could end up happening is you end up waiting 10 years and you make 50 percent and when you analyze 50 percent over 10 years you might as well have just left your money in the ISA on a fixed um, interest yielding security. So to answer your question, what works for me is I look at the price, I look at the trend, and I think about the sector. And I try not to focus too much on the intrinsic value. What I try and do is I make sure that I try and buy at a level where I can buy more if the price falls and be fairly confident that over a long period of time, I should be able to yield a return. I'll give you an example, eCar. eCar, when it first came to market 18 months ago, how do you value that? It's tough. How do you value an ETF? It's tough. Because the data isn't out there. So what you have to do is treat the ETF as a stock itself and think about the other buyers and what are they doing. When a market is new, like an IPO or an ETF that's just launched, think you're on a level playing field with everyone else who also doesn't have the tools or maybe the minerals to value an ETF. So what do you do? You think like them. We're all on the same, we're all in this together. We're all on the same level playing field. We all cannot value an ETF. So what do we use? Number one, we can look at some of maybe the top stocks and see their value. So if you felt Tesla had a lot of legs, you might say, you know what? This should be a contributing factor. You can look at the documents for the ETF and it will tell you which stocks are in it. And you can look at the top 10 holdings and maybe take a view on the top five holdings. You can also look at the overall price of the ETF and maybe start buying halfway between the record high and the record low as a point to start buying. And if it dips further, you can buy more. Um, I think that was a great answer. Are you ready for the next question? Yes, I am ready for the next question. Tessa said, can you recommend a platform and or a provider? So obviously we spoke about a few platforms, but I think she's asking you if you can recommend one. I have only used Hargreaves Lansdowne. However, that's more for convenience. And Hargreaves Lansdowne just has so many ETFs. So your decision on choosing your platform is a personal one. There's no right or wrong. If you've got a low budget, you can use Trade in 212, you can use IG Index. If you've transferred your pension, and a lot of people don't realize you can actively manage your pension, call up your pension provider and ask them how your pension did last year. You realize a lot of them will tell you your pension is down, right? You can actually take control of your pension as long as it's not an active one in your current place of work. If you've moved jobs a few times, you can actually consolidate all your pensions onto Hargreaves Lansdowne or AJ Bell. Um, if you look earlier, I had some slides. I had some um, 
platforms. Harvey's Lansdowne, Vanguard, AJ Bell, the Giro, IG Index. There are more. Um, there's Trading212. There's, I think, eToro. Yeah. Just do your own due diligence. Look at the costs. Look at who has the more. I prefer a platform that has more, more available ETFs. Yeah. Some people prefer a platform that has the cheapest costs. Some people, it's 50-50. So there's no right or wrong. Just look at your own situation, look at your budget, and use that to decide. And then look at reviews online. Yeah. And so, you can always move providers from yes. platforms if you feel you're not getting the best. So Leah asked, what's the difference between an ETF platform and provider? Very, very, very good question. The providers are the ones that actually create the ETF. So an ETF actually needs to be created. The fun is like, imagine I make smoothies at home and then I call Tesco and I ask Tesco if they can start selling my smoothies in the shop. I am an ETF provider. I am a smoothie maker. Tesco is the platform where people can go and buy smoothies. I think that is the easiest way I can explain the difference. That's fine. Thank you. And I want to see your name right. It could be Gulia or it could be Guelia. When you find an ETF is close to its yearly high, do you sell or keep holding? I sell. Okay, thank we you. We have this saying in uh, Stock Pickers, profit is profit. You yes. do not go broke taking profit. Correct. I'm right? If there are any Stock Pickers in the chat, give us a little wave. Me. Profit is profit. And why? If, you, uh, if, you, if you'd listened to this mantra, this philosophy, in January and February, and taking your profits off, after the dip, you could have bought more. You could have got back in. So there's no right and wrong when it comes to taking profit. I'm just saying what I do. And what I do works for me. Yeah. It works for my process and it works for my system. Yeah, they right? had another question. It was, what is a reasonable fee to pay when buying ETFs? And what would be too much? Personally, I think that's quite subjective. According, yeah, it's subjective. I mean, you can't put a, you can't put a price on convenience. Yes, absolutely. This applies more with stocks because stocks sometimes they can be a little bit tricky to get into to buy. You have to maybe get the right quote, refresh it, and stuff like that. With ETFs, because they're slightly low risk, you can be a bit more. Um, like I like my portfolio to be diversified. Mm. So I would have 5% in very high risk securities. I will have another 50% in medium um, in dividend yielding securities and what I call the medium companies like um, your PayPal's or your Squares or your um, Tesla's or your... Um, companies that are still growing but have gone past a certain phase and then you can have maybe the last 40 percent 45 percent in what i call etfs funds so maybe an index tracker an etf uh, a couple of etfs and reits now i look at certain companies as etfs this is a personal thing. For me, Amazon is an ETF. Apple is an ETF. Yeah. These big companies, Google is an ETF. Facebook is an ETF. I might it's jump the concept. In. Yeah, I might jump it's in and ask a gone. question because Alex has been has been waiting for this for a while. Debiden, where do you need, where do you normally get your data from? Um, I use Google Finance. Google Finance. So. Yeah. Um, but I use Google as well. Google Finance just gives me price. With price, I do a lot of, um, if I show you, 
care. This sheet feeds in from Google Finance. I've put in my own individual columns with different calculations. Um, this column here tells me which ETF has a temper. This top column here is a bit wild. This will tell me which ETF is close to the bottom of its one year low. So this tells me that this ETF is 20% higher. But I will also look at some other ETFs like Momentum. This is a Momentum ETF. And what it does is it selects some stocks and you can see some different providers here, Legal in general, Vanguard, iShares, SPDR, Wisdom Tree, JP Morgan, Amplify. But what I will do is I will look at something like a Momentum ETF. And this Momentum ETF was actually at a year high a few weeks ago. Based on the fact that Momentum was at a year high, this ETF measures moment, market momentum. And market momentum will tell you, um, it will have stocks like Apple in it, that it feels gauges market momentum. But based on knowing how momentum is doing, you can actually then select some other stocks. But in general, I get my data from Google Finance, and I will always Google what an ETF I'll always Google an ETF and then check which ETFs are inside it. Yeah. I'm going to keep rolling with the questions because we have a few more. Um, we have six now. Brogan said, can you talk about overnight fees? Is that another way of saying transaction costs? Let's keep... No. Overnight okay. fees. So your bank pays you interest rate every year of 0.01%. Yeah. If you divide that by... 365 it will get you your daily rate yeah banks park cash at the bank of england every night and receive an overnight rate and then they pass a little bit of that on to you that's that is why banks pay you yeah so your overnight fees is the equivalent of that that your platform is going to um, charge you because they get charged and it should represent, I'm sorry to get a bit more complex, but if you buy something denominated in dollars and you, you're investing in pounds, that conversion means you should be getting the interest rate differential between the pound and the dollar. Yeah. In layman's terms. Thank you. And get charged that nightly. Amanda Wilson said, would you just invest a larger lump sum when the price is low or a monthly amount? Once again, apologies to jump in, Amanda. That is always a personal question because um, it's, it's about how you feel. It is. I will tell you what I would do. In times like this, I would increase the amount, yes, but I will still leave room to buy more. Yeah. I try to keep my portfolio 50% cash, personally. And that gives me options when yeah. prices fall to buy more. Yeah. But yes, in times like this that happen once every 10 years, I understand the full process of using a bit more capital. So if you were going to invest 500 and then leave 500 as a buffer, you might go for one grand and leave another grand as a buffer. Right. Thank you. But affordability is a key thing. As long as you're not gambling, as long as you are still only investing a portion of your savings, you should be good. Thank you. I've just launched the poll. That will be something good to have because I know time is of the essence. Four more questions. Arjun said, I came across a story on Finamize about gold ETFs, how it's better to buy a gold ETF than the commodity itself. Could you cover this briefly about the perks of investing in precious metals, in precious metal ETFs? Thanks. I'm going to add oil to that. So oil and gold are a different type of ETF. They're called ETIs. These are a bit more high risk because they're not a basket of stocks. They're actually sometimes a basket of derivatives or futures. When you buy oil properly, you can actually buy oil for May delivery. You can buy oil for 
um, April, June, July, August, September. And the different contracts could be inside the ETF. As one contract expires, the ETF provider will sell out of that contract and buy the next contract. So it becomes a rolling basket of smoothies. And this is where the analogy of smoothie starts to break down a little bit. Right. You just have to be a little bit more careful. See investments in gold ETFs as a little bit more complex. Commodity ETFs in general as a little bit more complex and be very, very careful. VIX is another one. Thank you. Right. Uh, three more questions. There's a few in the chat, so I want to get through this. Dan Henderson said, is the price of an ETF entirely set by speculation? If an ETF just launches, it's more risky than an ETF that's a bit more mature. So there's an element of speculation, but there's also an element of the industry or sector that you're investing in the individual stocks actually doing quite well in their own right. So look at it more as how are the individual stocks doing as an industry rather than purely people are gambling. Your ETF should capture a portion of returns of the industry. Mm. Thank you. Suraj said, are management fees for an ETF higher than those for mutual funds? Not necessarily. Um, they should be less. They should be less. They're more cost efficient. So if you scroll up back to the slide earlier, um, I think it was why why use ETFs? You can see it says it's cost efficient. So they're cheaper. Mm. Thank Next you. Next question, please. Last question. Nelson has said, could you please tell us your top five largest positions? Thank you. Are you happy to share that information? I'm happy to share it, but I'm going to say do not buy just because I own them. Because believe me, I bought at a very, very cheap, cheap price. <laughs> so if you want to also own these ETFs, be very patient. Wait for a price and make sure you are, um, you are careful in how you invest. Set yourself a budget per ETF and don't even use your whole budget in one go. Um, my top, my favorite ETFs, eCar is the only one I currently still own at an average price of about 3.5. The other ETFs that I would like to get onto my wish list are ESPO. I am waiting for a price of 40 and I'll invest a little bit there. Um, the other one is battery ETF, BST. So these are the guys who are responsible for um, having the charging stations. Um, I would love to be a part of that ETF one day, but the price is way too high for me. One of the things I teach in my sessions is you have to be willing to walk away from a good ETF if you don't get the price that you want. I hope that answers your question. Thank you, I hope it did. I know some attendees have left. Um, just to quickly go into the poll, um, so ETFs stand for, the first answer is correct, exchange traded fund. Number two, what investment platforms did Debiden mention? This was a bit of a tricky one because <laughs> Debiden started freestyling. <laughs> so he mentioned trading 212. However, the first answer is correct. 57% of attendees got that right. And how is an ETF different from a stock? The majority of you got that right. Um, a stock focuses on one company, whereas an ETF tracks an index, a commodity, bonds, or a basket of securities. Let me share the results so you can all see. Brogan said, thanks both. Have a great weekend too. Debiden, because you've been in your element speaking about ETFs, I haven't been, you uh, check the chat. A lot of people are very grateful for all the information you've provided today. 
Um, is there anything else anyone wants to share for those who are still here? I've tried to answer as many questions as possible, whether in the Q&A section. Amanda Wilson said, could you have a portfolio built solely of ETFs? You could. You can have a portfolio built entirely of ETFs, portfolio. <laughs> property, whatever you like. However, I'm a big fan of diversification. My right. portfolio would have 20% ETFs maximum. And yeah. that's because I'm a stock picker. Yeah. I like to choose stocks and I'm careful in the way I choose stocks. Um, so, I mean, if you want to hear more, you know where to find me. Follow me on LinkedIn. Um, you can follow the Stock Pickers Academy on Instagram. Um, you can join the Telegram group for free. Um, just hit the link in the bio on the Instagram um, at Stock Pickers Academy. Um, and yeah, you can ask me questions for free in the Telegram group chat. Yeah, I'm going to put the Instagram there now. Stock Pickers Academy in, um, Instagram is there. So if you go into the link and buy, you'll see different options, whether that's if you want a one to one or if you want to join the free Telegram group or um, yeah, there's so many different options on there. I can't remember them all. I'm saying it off the top of my head. And for anyone who would like to join Rich Girl Chronicles, which is slightly different, there is a Google Docs form. You can fill it out and I will be in contact. That link is coming to you now. It is here. You can join. Hopefully that works. Before we go, any more questions? Thank you to everybody who has joined. We hope this has been great. We hope that you make fantastic call to actions with your finances and hopefully you have a fantastic weekend and maybe we'll be back. It's been a pleasure listening to all of you. All right. Um, you. Answering your questions. I hope I was useful. I hope you learned something new today. Yes, definitely. I even have. All right, you all take care. All right, take care. Bye. All right, bye.